and welcome to this week's edition of You News, where you get You News. For our top story tonight, an apple a day keeps the NFTs away. Coinbase announced this week that they would be disabling NFT purchasing and sending in their DeFi wallets, citing Apple's 30% tax fee on every payment made inside each app of the App Store. Apple is essentially demanding 30% of every gas fee transaction used in the wallet, but still refuses to support cryptocurrency as a payment method. Coinbase issued a statement via their Twitter that because of these factors, they couldn't comply even if they tried. This news comes days after Elon Musk trolled Apple CEO Tim Cook on Twitter over the exact exact same 30% hostage tax issue, and asked about the rumor that Apple was threatening to remove Twitter from the App Store. No response has been issued from Apple regarding the NFTs, but I'm sure after they speak with Xi Jinping and the CCP, they will prepare a statement. Next up, BFFs with SBF and SEC Chairman Gary Gensler says that crypto holders should embrace SEC regulation. This is like Bill Cosby saying women should embrace Rohypnol. On Gary's list of achievements after working at Goldman Sachs was his helping Bill Clinton pass a law that kept over-the-counter derivatives unregulated, which was one of many dominoes that led to the 2008 financial crisis. So this time it only took Gary two years to rain a meteor down on an entire financial system instead of eight. How'd you do that? It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> we'll keep you updated as they add more scenes to this shit show. Over the holiday break, Ben Armstrong, who's the host of the YouTube channel BitBoy Crypto, spent his Thanksgiving break in the Bahamas harassing Sam Bankman fried over social media to come out of his apartment and speak with him directly. He then traveled to Miami for a weekend of crypto events and proceeded to lose his mind during a panel, claiming that we will all see he was right soon about Shark Tank entrepreneur and early FTX investor Kevin O'Leary. Now, Kevin didn't help himself by siding with SBF after the New York Times interview Wednesday night, saying that he believes SBF is telling the truth. But BitBoy deciding that he is the personal Batman of crypto now is pretty funny, considering he made a lot of his original following and money off promoting scam projects for hire. This should be the point where we all acknowledge that anyone in real life acting like Batman is not a hero. They're just an asshole with money. Next up is our first heartwarming holiday bro story of the week. A Twitter user by the name of Izan recounted the tale from one year ago about how he helped an unknown holder sell unclaimed SafeMoon pre-sale tokens worth $50 million at the time of contact. Izan said that after flagging the wallet for a large holding but inactivity, he received an alert that the wallet had been used after six months of silence to purchase a token called Unvaxed Sperm. He realized that the simplest way to possibly contact the holder was to go to the Discord server of Unvaxed Sperm and ask who had made the transaction. After getting a response, he informed the holder about the $50 million of unclaimed SafeMoon he held. The holder had no idea how to claim or sell his multi-million dollar bag, and Izan walked him through the process step by step and helped the holder immediately sell $10 million worth. The man thanked the helpful holiday bro and then went to work his night shift. I just love this new Christmas classic about the ultimate pump and dump project making a multi-millionaire out of someone with unvaxxed sperm. God, I love DeFi. I'm sure somewhere someone is writing a horrible Hallmark movie about this. Heartwarming tale. (laughs) Keep up the Christmas spirit, guys. Our last story tonight might make you glad you're not a billionaire. The founder of Forex Club, A Russian billionaire by the name of Vyacheslav Tehran died in a helicopter crash earlier this week. His death comes on the heels of Tian Tian Kulander, the co-founder of the Hong Kong-based crypto company Amber Group, who was reported to have died in his sleep at 30 years old. The beginning of the month began with the co-founder of MakerDAO's mysterious drowning death after several erratic tweets. But don't worry, guys, because Alex Mashinsky of Celsius, Do Kwan of Luna, and Sam Bankman-Fried of FTX are all alive, in perfect health, and not incarcerated. That's all for this week's edition of You News, where you get totally unnecessary, useless crypto news. I'm Tupac of Coors, and I'll see you next week.